container ship crosses the Pacific. The weather forecast looked manageable. Then the waves hit at a particular angle, at a particular frequency. The ship begins to roll, side to side, building with each cycle. In minutes, hundreds of containers break loose. Steel twists, cargo crashes into the sea, millions of dollars lost. Because somewhere between the design office and the open sea, no one fully understood how this hull would behave in these conditions. Long before computers and simulation software, shipbuilders mostly relied on crude tools and instinct. But even then, they understood the risk of building blind. In the old naval yards, shipwrights carved scale models from wood. Floated in calm ponds, nudged forward with sticks, their movements watched with squinting eyes and careful notes. It was slow, imprecise, but it was better than guessing. Then came William Froude. In 1871, he built a giant water tank, nearly the length of a football field. Not for ships, but for miniatures he called models. He towed small hulls through the water, observing their behaviour. From this, he uncovered a powerful hypothesis. If the maths is right, a model can tell you everything about a full-sized ship. Naval architects call it the ship design spiral, a cycle of decisions. You choose a hull form, test it, adjust the weight, tweak the propulsion, then circle back to the hull, over and over again. If you want a model to behave like the ship, it needs to follow three rules. First, geometric similarity. The model must look exactly like the ship. Second, kinematic similarity. The motion of water around the model must match the motion around the ship. If a full-size wave hits the real bow at 20 knots, the model needs a scaled-down wave hitting at a proportionally scaled speed. Third, dynamic similarity. Now comes the hardest part. Forces. The push of water, the pull of gravity, the ship's own inertia. All these must be scaled down in perfect ratio. It's just like watching a slowed-down version of the same event. Only when all three conditions are met can a 5-metre model predict how a 300-metre ship will cut through waves. However, not all forces scale the same way. So before we can even run a test, we have to decide which forces matter most for that particular vessel. Surface tension slips in only at the smallest scales, but when it does, it can pull spray and air into places they don't belong. Viscosity clings to the plates and cuts speed millimetre by millimetre. If your priority is precise drag accounting, say for an ultra-efficient tanker, viscosity cannot be ignored. For ships where stability and comfort matter, like passenger ferries or cruise liners, inertia must be scaled correctly so the models roll, pitch and heave mirror the rhythm of the real vessel. And gravity. The force behind every crest and trough governs how the hull meets the sea, shaping fuel consumption, sea-keeping ability, and the experience of everyone on board. Decide which of these dominates, and the rest of the test plan falls into place. High-speed craft like patrol boats trade wave-making for skin drag. Here, Reynolds' number similarity climbs in priority, and the experimental strategy shifts accordingly. For a typical displacement vessel, like a bulk carrier, wave-making drag outweighs friction by a wide margin. Designers, therefore, accept small viscosity errors and devote their modelling budget to an exact reproduction of the wave field. That's where the Froude number comes in. It's a dimensionless ratio that balances gravity and inertia. Where U is the design speed of the vessel, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and L is the characteristic length, typically the waterline length of the ship. Engineers begin with the full-scale ship. Its length and design speed are known, usually from the mission requirements. From that, the full-scale Froude number is calculated. Then comes the model. If it's, say, 1 25th the length of the real ship, the velocity must scale accordingly. Once the Froude number is matched, the model's speed is set. The result is often a deceptively low test speed, sometimes just a few knots, but that's the speed at which the model will produce waves identical in shape, proportion and energy balance to those of the full-size ship. Every other measurement – resistance, trim, heave, pitch – is only valid if this condition is met. Break fraud similarity and you break the test. Resistance – engineers tow the model through calm water, measuring the drag at every speed. This tells them how much power the ship will need to hold course, because resistance force is measured directly, and effective power is calculated as P equals R times V, where R is resistance and V is velocity. 
and more importantly, how much fuel it will burn over a lifetime. Testing this on a real ship would cost weeks of time and thousands of dollars, but here, with just a few metres of water tank, you get the answer in a day. Next, propulsion and wake flow. A scale propeller is installed. Laser sheets and dye tracing reveal how water moves through the wake, and any instability or swirl shows up here long before it causes vibration or noise at full scale. It's a precise, repeatable way to tune the flow between the hull, the propeller and the rudder. Then, manoeuvring. The model runs zigzags and turning circles. Every angle of heel, the sideways tilt of a ship when turning or under wind or wave forces. Every overshoot, the amount the ship turns past its intended heading before stabilising. Every delay is measured. With a model, you can try extreme rudder inputs that would be dangerous or impossible on a real ship. And you can repeat them over and over again until the motion is understood. Seakeeping comes next. In a wave basin, artificial storms are created. Waves from every direction. Long rolling swells, steep waves crashing head on, and chaotic seas hitting from the side. The model moves through it all, its motion tracked in six degrees of freedom. Slamming and vibration. Certain hulls, especially those with narrow, sharply angled bow shapes, can strike the surface hard. Each impact sends a shock through the structure. Accelerometers and high-speed cameras record these moments, frame by frame, so engineers can adjust framing, thickness and load paths before any real stress ever meets steel. In every case, the model gives engineers something no simulation ever can – real water, real motion and risk reduced to a scale they can control. But today, designers also use computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. It simulates how water moves around the full-size hull, using powerful computers to fill in the details a model can't capture. The most reliable results come when both are used together. The model gives real-world measurements, and CFD adds deeper insight. But not every builder takes that step. Some shipyards skip physical testing, and sometimes that decision has consequences. Remember that container ship from the beginning, the one that lost hundreds of containers to violent rolling? Wave basin testing could have revealed that vulnerability. Engineers could have tested the hull in following seas, at different wave frequencies, watching for the exact conditions that trigger parametric roll. They could have adjusted the design, added dampening systems, or at minimum, warned the operators which conditions to avoid. The Zumwalt class destroyer is one of the most advanced warships ever built, and it shows another side of this risk. Its signature feature? A sharp, inward sloping hull called a tumble home, designed to reduce radar visibility. But that same hull form raised concerns early on. In certain sea conditions, especially with waves coming from behind, the shape reduced the ship's ability to right itself. Simulation showed that the vessel could behave unpredictably, even dangerously, in following seas. These stability issues didn't emerge during construction, they were flagged during early model tests. But by then, the hull form had already been chosen. To the Navy's credit, the ship later passed sea trials in rough weather, and its performance surprised even some skeptics. But the concern remains a reminder. Even cutting-edge designs are vulnerable to scaling errors, blind spots or false assumptions. That's why small prototypes matter. Every episode on this channel takes days to produce, from research and scripting to storyboarding, animation and even voiceover, and it's all made possible by our Patreon crew. We've just revamped our Patreon and we've prepared a lot more to share with you. As a deckhand, you'll get early ad-free access to new videos, be able to vote on upcoming video topics, grab exclusive wallpapers for your phone and PC, and see your name on our supporters wall at the end of every new video. If you'd like a closer look behind the scenes, the officer tier gives you time lapses of our team working hard on brand new animations or thumbnails. You'll also get behind the scenes updates, animatic releases and a monthly newsletter filled with maritime stories and news that we don't cover on the channel. And for those who really want to take the helm, our captain tier lets you sail your very own custom designed ship in the casual navigation art style, featured in a future episode for everyone to see. You'll also get your name in the end credits as a captain supporter with video shoutouts and private Q&A sessions on Discord. However you choose to support, 
or even if you're just here watching, it truly means a lot. You'll find the Patreon link down below. Thank you for keeping casual navigation afloat.